Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our class on adding Fibonacci retracements or the Fibonacci tool and the 78.6 retracement level to your trading strategy. Now, I would appreciate it greatly if you could click on the bell icon down below or the subscribe button. I promise you we won't bother you with much stuff. We won't contact you at all, except whenever I upload a video, the system will ping you to let you know there's a new class to watch. So let's get moving forward with our trading strategy with Fibonacci. Now, Fibonacci retracements are ratios used to identify potential reversals. Now, today we're not going to spend a great deal of time on learning how to use Fibs, you know, and putting them on our charts. We'll briefly go over it because you all have to know, and we're not going to really go into in-depth detail what the 38.2 is and what the 61.8 is and all of that stuff. But you do have to have a basic understanding. Now, the Fibonacci ratios are developed or come from the Fibonacci sequence. Now, this class is not designed to delve too deeply into the mathematics. But it's fairly simple where the sequence comes from. When you start out with a zero, nothing, and add to it one thing, and I think these came from somebody observing bunny rabbits. But if you take and add one bunny rabbit, you still only have one. So zero plus one is only going to give you one. You add another bunny rabbit into the crowd, you're going to have one plus one or two. And then if you add the third uh, that uh, bunny rabbit into the crowd, you'd have one plus two or three. And then you'd go two plus three equals five. So you can see right here, two plus three gives you five. Three plus five is gonna give you eight. Five plus eight is gonna give you 13. And the right-hand number is always the combination of the two preceding numbers. So if we go all the way over here to 55 and 89 and add them together, we're gonna to get 144. It always starts with zero and progresses. So the numbers are always identical, these identically the same all the way out until infinity. So that's the calculation up there. I don't understand it. I don't know most of you can understand it. But if we break it down to after the zero and a one, each number is the sum of the two prior numbers. Now, if we take the number, whatever number you're looking at, okay? So in this case, we're gonna say in the scale we've seen, we're up to 21. And 21 came from eight plus 13. If we were to take that and take the 21, the most current number, and divide it by the previous number, guess what? It'll always come out to 1.615, 1.617. And this gives us the extension, which is known as 1.618. If we take that reverse and take the preceding number and divide it by the current number, so in this case we'll take the 13 and divide it by 21, it comes out to 0.618. And so therefore we have the 618 retracement. And we can go on and on and on and on and on and on, and on each time moving a, de a digit away. So in other words, if we were to take the 13, and what would we have when we have 13 plus 21? We'd have 34. So if we go two steps back and take the 34 and go not to the 21, but to the 34 and divide it, we get 3.382. Now, if we were to take the 1.618 and take away from it the 618, guess what? We'd always have one. But now these numbers were not developed for statisticians. They weren't developed for financial markets. They've been around forever. And they can be seen in Greek vases, in the spirals of the galaxy, in the shapes of the snails on the back of snails. And they're known as the golden mean. They even say that the ratio between the eyes, nose, and ears of human beings, the more perfect they are to the ratio, the more attractive that person is. Not on a, there's no scale, but when they're more visually attractive. Something about these numbers and the proportion make them attractive. Now, we've also seen on financial charts, and most of us understand trends and retracements, but we see that when an asset moves up and it's uptrending, it will move up and it'll lose, lose a little bit of its momentum for a second, 
and it will usually retrace to 38.2% of the move up or to 50% of the move up or to 61.8% of the move up. It will move to the Fibonacci levels. Now, I'll show you in a second what these levels are. Now, 50% is included in the Fib tables, although 50% has nothing to do with Fibonacci. It comes from Dow theory. And Dow theory says that the markets tend to retrace themselves 50% of the prior gain before moving back in a direction. So let's go over to a chart. Now, FIBs are pretty easy to put in a chart today because there's a retracement tool, and we just drop it on. And FIBs always are put on the previous move because they're projecting the next move. So you have to locate whether there's been an uptrend or a downtrend that's concluded. And then you use the significant high and the significant low of that uptrend or downtrend. So let me take you over to a real chart and let's take a look at this. And it's relatively easy. Okay. So here we see on the Fibonacci tra retracements that we had the price moving in a downtrend. And you see the, let's see if I can make this a little bit darker so you can see it better. Okay, so you can see this trend line. We take the Fibonacci tool and we extend it to the significant high and pull it to the significant low where that downtrend ended. And then it will automatically drop these on our charts. So let's see if I... Doesn't matter where it is. So let's go to our Fibonacci retracement tool. And here we have an uptrend. Okay, it's concluded we've now moved to a downtrend. So we're gonna locate the significant swing low. And I use this word significant all the time because it isn't necessarily the lowest low or the lowest swing low. It is what was significant in that trend or that movement. And then we simply pull our fib, fib tool forward and end it at the significant high. And see, right now, that's not the significant high. The significant high of that uptrend was here. Okay. Now, the tool automatically drops all this on our, our charts. And we can see we have the 1.1%. 78.6 is what we're here to talk about today, which is right here. We have 50%, 38.2, So that means that this now that it's moved into a reversal downtrend, we can see the price came right down to this 38.2 level. That was an important level. Okay. Now it's con it stayed on that level for a long time, and then it continued to fall, and it fell, and look at where it retreated and started moving back up, exactly at the 50% level. Okay. So in this case... we have our fibs on this downtrend, okay? And here we have them all drawn out, but to see the downtrend has ended. It's moved back into an uptrend. But this, these numbers held true at that point, but then we moved up here, we moved down, and then we moved up again, okay? Well, that, you can extend these numbers forward, but those, because we might want to see duplicates, but now that we've finished a downtrend, okay, we need, because we had this uptrend, downtrend that it was based on, then we went into a short-term uptrend, but now we've moved into a downtrend. The downtrend has concluded. So, we would locate our significant swing low and our significant swing high, and we take our FIB tool and pull it down and just click on it at the low. Okay. Then what it does, it, it then puts on here and projects forward for us these values. Now we can see moving forward how important this 78.6 percent price has moved all the way back, and we got a you know a, a big little jump here and a swing high. But look at how important the 78.6 and the 61.8 were in this move back up. Okay. So, but this is how we put them on our charts. And granted, we can easily put them back in the past, but we can only trade in the future. So with FIBS, we're always using the concluded 
previous trend, whether it's an uptrend or a downtrend. If it's an uptrend, we pull our tool. If we're concluding a downtrend, we pull our tool from the swing high to the swing low. If we're concluding an uptrend, we pull our tool from the swing low to the swing high. And that puts us on our chart. Once we have it on the chart, the rest is easy because now we just have to simply start understanding how to use it. So in order to find the Fibonacci retracements, you have to find the recent significant swing highs and swing lows. Then for downtrends, click on the swing high and drag the cursor to the most recent swing low. For an uptrend, do just the opposite. Pretty easy. So now let's see that we have them on the charts, what to do. So in order to apply your Fibonacci levels to your charts, you'll need to identify the swing highs and swing lows. When using the Fibonacci tool, the probability of trading success could increase when used with other support and resistance levels, trend lines, candlestick patterns for spotting entry and exit points. But remember, Fib levels or Fib retracement levels are alert zones. Retracement levels of alert traders or investors of a potential trend reversal, a resistance or a support area. Retracements are based on the prior move. So keep in mind that these retracement levels are not hard reversal points. Instead, they serve as alert zones. So the most common are the 23, 6, 38, 250, and 61, 8. Okay. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the most uncommon ones and how we can add that into our strategy. And that's the 78.6 level. So let's take a look at the 78.6 Fib strategy. Now imagine yourself in a store. The salesperson saying suddenly, all the goods are available at 78% discount. Guess what? Buyers step up, or at least some. The same principle can be used in the world of Forex trading. This is simple market psychology is valid for the financial market as well. If you know how to apply the Fibonacci tool correctly, so let's talk about the importance of the 78.6 retracement because that's a very steep retracement level. Fibonacci levels give traders an opportunity to join a trend at a discount and ride the continuation of that trend. Have you ever heard the expression, sell the rallies, buy the dips? Fibonacci traders combine both the 88.6 and the 78.6. Fib retracements to highlight a hot spot trading zone where high probability trades are more likely to take place. Indeed, the zone between 78.6 and 88.6 Fibonacci retracement is that hotspot zone. New research on this subject claims that the golden ratio 1.618 can be applied not only to mathematics but also to physics, chemistry, biology, and topology of space-time. Spiraling galaxies such as our Milky Way also follow the familiar Fibonacci pattern. Wow, if the Milky Way can, and space-time continuum can, and physics does, why can't we use it for financials? So in times of high volatility trading, the price level to respect the 78.6 and the 68 and the 86 to a great extent. There is a connection. That is why 78.6 and 88.6 are extremely important in my trading. Remember, price action in Forex repeats itself. Or in all markets. So remember that the Fibonacci retracement tool is used only during trending periods. We always chart it from left to right. As mentioned earlier, Fibonacci numbers provide excellent entry points during trending markets. They signal the reversal points for a trader to find entries during retracements of a trend. During intensive trading in the financial markets, I've noticed that the FIB sequence levels are also valuable when plotted on the charts on time frames higher than 30 minutes. The FIB sequence levels of 78.6 and 88.6 indicate deeper retracements and are usually great entry points. Adding each Fibonacci sequence level on the chart manually is very important as traders assess highs and lows on the underlying market through the sub subjective approach. So here we can look on this chart and see how important that that 78.6 was when the markets came down. 
they look at that. It held directly between 78.6 and 88 and then moved back up. So this was a retracement of a strong previous ongoing uptrend. Now, when we have this level, okay, and we see it hit that level, isn't that helping us finding out how to enter the market on that deepest retracement to take advantage of that continuation? The same 78.6 and 88.6 levels are valid as long as price keeps trending, which means it does not retrace deep enough to hit or touch the 100% Fib retracement. Now, to certify this, a lot of times you might you want to use other indicators, especially trend indicators. You might want to, because the markets will be and could be an overbought or oversold, but we want to make sure that it isn't a reversal, that we are just retracing and ready to continue on that trend. So we need to know that the previous trend will continue. So again, imagine yourself in a store in a store, and all the goods are on sale at 88%. Remember before we said it's 78? Now we got them on 88. So guess what? Buyers step up from everywhere. They come running at the last chance. Fibonacci levels give traders an opportunity to join the trend at a discount and ride the continuation of that trend. Fibonacci levels are very useful, provided you don't miss the information when it comes up. So I recommend drawing all the main levels on your chart to avoid wrangles like 78.6 and 76.4. Okay, remember, they're not exact. Remember when we looked at building these ratios, we divided 13 by 21 and then 21 by 31 and, and so on. And so they're all 1.618, 1 1.618, 1 1.6184, and they were averaged out into 1.618, and that's what we use or 618, or 382, or 236. So they're not exact. We simply must be aware of what prices tell us in order to benefit from them. Retracements between 618 and 764 are quite interesting too. To buy in a bullish trend or to sell in a bearish trend, quite often there are significant retracements and price to start rising again after this kind of correction. If, for example, price falls to the 76.4 retracement, the 78.6 level can be used to set your stop loss. Finally, prices rarely fall below the 85.4 level, which is a very steep dip. When you see it fall below that, you know you're in actually a reversal, not a retracement. So in this case, it's probably not a retracement. So in conclusion, Fibonacci retracements are mainly used as technical zones like support areas and possible resistance. Indeed, when stakeholders draw their retracements, they are particularly attentive to the 23, 6, 38, 2, and 50. A lot of times people ignore the 78, 6, and the 14.6, and the 88, and the 84.4, because most of our strategies and most of our trading takes place between the 23, 6, 38, 2, 50, and 68, 2. And what happens is they then tend to ignore and they base all of their trading decisions, all their strategies, and they just say when it's below 68.2, ah, I can't do anything. Well, you can find all new opportunities. So, of course, it goes without saying that Fibonacci retracements should not be used as signals. They must be used with other techniques for the trader to obtain a better chance of success when he enters a position. Charters, figures, indicators, oscillators, price action, the possible endless. So let's take advantage of them, combine them together, use your fibs for another filter, another piece of information. So please don't forget to subscribe or click the bell icon. I would greatly appreciate it. And please visit my YouTube site and take advantage of all the classes that are up there and watch them at your convenience.